guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm acrylic artist Joni Young, and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint a big, beautiful fantasy piece. I'm going to take you around my gallery right now, my shop, and, and it's my studio as well where I create all my pieces. I'm going to show you a few, of, just a few of my fantasy pieces that I've done over the years. So here's the first one I did uh, about a year and a half ago, and I've got this big circle in the in the middle there that's like a portal or an entryway to another world. It's very inviting and I've got this other little small portal on the bottom and a little staircase going up on the left and then over here I've got my bubble world so it started out as a floral a bunch of flowers in a field it was gonna be more of a floral piece and then I started adding these bubbles and I decided to put a different landscape inside of each one and yeah they're all completely different this painting took a really really long time I have videos for both of these paintings that you can go and watch I'll leave a link below you guys and here's one of my other ones now this is a print it's an aluminum print and here's another one I did maybe four or five years ago called sweet dreams and there's another one when I went through a phase of bright bright colors and rainbows and there we have another castle and a bridge and a staircase. I really, really like staircases. It's kind of my thing. I like to add staircases wherever I can in a painting. Okay, so there's a lot of fantasy pieces going on in my studio and it's one of my favorite subjects to paint. And I'm going to inspire you guys over the next few weeks um, to paint and create your own worlds and just to let yourself go free create, be inspired, motivated, and enjoy the process. So let's go ahead and get started, guys. So today I'm working on a 24 by 30 double primed canvas, and I've got a lot of different colors that I want to incorporate into this painting today. I'm going to be taking my largest blending brush, and I'm going to pull into all four of these colors, pink, orange, yellow, and white. I'm going to begin sweeping all those colors around in the sky, letting them blend around on their own, creating different shades and tones. I'm going to pick up these colors again. And continue blending them around deliberately leaving a few bare spots so that I can come in with my bluey purpley shadow colors. Okay, the next color I'm going to be using is light ultramarine blue and I'm using a really really big filbert brush. I'm going to pick up just a little bit of titanium white and I'm going to start applying wiggly lines and little circles and just blend that around in those little areas where there's not too much of the peach. So I'm going to start working on these shadows and clouds. Adding a little bit of white where I want them to be softer looking and lighter in color. Now I have a lot of paint that I put on the left side, so I'm just taking some of it off from there and blending it around in other areas where I need to add some more. Okay, with a clean, large blending brush, I'm going to take some white. And my brush is a little bit damp, but it's definitely not dripping. You just want to have a little bit of moisture in there to work with and softly blend those colors, sweeping them in little half circles, dusting around to give it more of a smoky, soft blended look. Now depending on the temperature of your room and how quickly you paint, if the paint is drying fast, you might have to push a little bit harder with your brush. I'm going to take some orange and some hot pink and my brush is all clean, doesn't have any of that blue in it anymore. And I'm just going to apply a little bit down in the midsection of the sky. Back to my large filbert, titanium white, and some neon yellow. 
I'm going to start pulling those colors right in down here. Now if you don't have any of my neon paints that I'm using today, you can use any orange or yellow you like. They don't have to be neons, I just I like really bright colors. So I want to create a really, really light area right here. So again, I'm using titanium white and a little bit of neon yellow. Although in this video it looks like it's just straight white, it's not. It's almost like a buttery color. Okay, I've cleaned my brush off again and I'm going to pick up phthalo blue and turquoise. Turning my brush sideways and pulling across, softly blending from one side of the canvas to the other. Here's where we'll be creating our water and our under the sea world with a treasure chest and lots of old ruins and uh, even an old staircase. Now I'm picking up a little bit of white along with that turquoise and I'm going to start blending that in and coming down diagonally to give it a soft, very, very soft blended look and the illusion that maybe there are some streaks and sun rays kind of coming through. And then I'm going to fill this all in the same way, blending back and forth, little circles, just softly blending them all together. Okay, now with my angle brush, this is a large angle brush and I've got light ultramarine blue. If you don't have this shade, it's just ultramarine blue with titanium white mixed. Now I'm gonna apply this right above the water at the horizon line. This is just another shadow. Maybe there's some islands or little mountains off in the distance, or maybe there are just some clouds. I'm basically adding it because I really like the color it makes blended with a little bit of that orange and the hot pink. I think these colors look really really nice together. And I'm going to soften up and get some lighter tones adding some white to them. Getting a little bit water on my brush now. I'm going to start doing little half circles and sweeping up, scumbling around, Taking some hot pink now, I'm going to filter, adding just a light watered down layer of this over part of the blue. Doing this will give me a light purple color that looks very, very pretty with all the other colors in this painting. Now I'm mixing white with neon pink. Again, use any pink that you have. It doesn't have to be a neon version. Okay, let's start adding that around, little wiggles and lines and illusion of little clouds. I'm going to start building up this horizon now. Now notice how I didn't cut the landscape in half. I talked about this in my last video. Uh, it's very important to not ever do that. It looks a lot better if you do either more sky to land or more land than sky or in this case water. Okay so now I've got my angle brush again and I'm taking some white with neon yellow. And I'm just going to start incorporating a little hazy buttery yellow filter over part of the peach and that other light yellowy white we've got here in the middle. I want to create more of a glowy feeling to this and it was a little bit too dull. It ha I had a bit too much white in it so I wanted some more of that yellow. And just some soft peaks on our clouds. Okay now I've got a mini fan brush. I've gotten it a little bit wet. I'm pulling in turquoise and titanium white. A little bit of that neon yellow. Load both sides. Just 
going to start coming in with the surface of the water so we can tell where the surface is and where the depth and underneath the water is. We want to have that line. And then I'll start pulling in and scumbling around little spaces of light, creating a little pattern, loopy pattern in the water, mainly down at the bottom so it looks like it's the bottom of the ocean or the sea. And then on an angle, line your brush up right underneath that line and pull softly and gently for some light rays. This always helps to make it look kind of magical and more of a fantasy type of painting when you do this. It's just so pretty. I love adding rays of light. And I'm even going to dust over that turquoise yellowy white color on some of my clouds. Um, a periwinkle, it's kind of like a periwinkle blue that we've got going on back there, that light ultramarine blue. And a little bit of this minty green is very complimentary. just helps to add a little bit more depth to the sky. You can see how pretty that looks, eh? And I'm adding some more of that pattern in the water, just little loops, and I love using this fan brush for that because it kind of starts, when the fan brush gets wet, it pulls apart and separates into three or four sections, and then you can create a neat pattern, so you can create four lines at once and it also looks really, really pretty. I don't know if you guys can hear uh, the rain uh, in the background of this voiceover. It wasn't raining until I began this voiceover, and this happened to me last time too. <laughs> it seems like every time I try to do a voiceover, it starts raining. Um, I don't know, maybe you guys kind of like that. I love the sound of rain, but uh, hopefully it's not too distracting. So I'm just going to come over the top of the surface again, adding some of that phthalo, turquoise, and white. Still using my little mini fan brush. I really recommend picking up a mini fan brush or two. Uh, if you don't have one, they're very versatile to use for so many different things. Now I've got sap green or hunter green, any dark, dark green that you have. Not phthalo though. I'm just coming in and using that for a shadow. So it's just about creating a few lines for the surface of the water. You want dark, mid-tones, and then bright, bright, skinny line that kind of goes a little bit loopy. And that makes, that creates the movement in the water. A little bit of a soft current or, yeah, some movement. And it's so easy to do. Okay, turning my brush sideways, getting a little bit of water, some green, some blue. I'm just going to start sweeping up and down different heights to give the illusion of some old ruins and pillars, maybe an old city, ancient city. It's all about creating your own story. You're telling the story when you create a painting. So whatever comes to your mind, go with it. While you're painting, sometimes it takes on a life of its own or a world of its own. And don't hold back. Trust in your ideas and go for it. You just never know until you try. Okay, I'm going to continue to pull and scumble sideways with my brush. Where I want it to be a little bit lighter, I'm going to add some of the yellow and some titanium white.
So I want it to be really light right here and I'm barely touching the canvas, just lightly brushing over some white neon yellow, maybe a hint of green that's still in my brush. You can use either turquoise or that sap green. And then I'm gonna keep pulling in and building up some rays under the water. I've switched over to my angle brush so I can get some different types of lines and edges softening this up because everything underwater is going to look a little bit hazy, a little bit softer. Okay, let's take some of that blue. Creating a little bit of a shadow back there. And then pulling up some white for some highlights. Maybe they're old white pillars that the green sea life hasn't completely covered up yet. You can just see a little hint of that there. I'm still using my angle brush and I'm cutting in little lines pulling across they're really small shorter at the top towards the surface of the water and then they're gonna get longer as they get closer down to the bottom for our staircase Pulling in a little bit of phthalo blue. Now I'm just going to do a little shadow underneath that surface line. Wash a little bit of that off. Water down my brush just a tiny bit. And I'm going to go ahead, pick up some of that sap green, some phthalo, and do another shadow line above. This helps to create a lot more contrast and depth. And let's go right underneath and pull in a little bit more lines, defining some of those that we have there already. And blend in the background, just a light soft scumble. Okay, I'm going to use a small flat brush now, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of turquoise. So again, it's just that sort of minty green color and build up the highlights right underneath the surface of the water and softly pull some light rays. Now I have no reference photo for this painting. This is all completely flowing through me. I'm creating this just for my imagination. And it's a lot of fun painting this way. This is one of my favorite ways to paint. Pull that brush sideways and back again for those little reflections on the bottom of the floor little skinny loopy lines and then some highlights on some of those old pillars and stones again just using white a little bit of yellow and a little bit of green
I'm just going to continue to make that light highlight color and pull in a few little lines back, way back there. Okay, it's time to add some more detail to the staircase, working on the shadow first. I'm using straight sap green for this. Turning my brush sideways to make them thicker and then turning it the other way to make skinnier lines. Shorter lines where it gets further and further away. And then we'll start adding the highlights. So this all helps to make your staircase look 3D. You need light highlights and shadows. All right, with a clean brush, I'm gonna take a little bit of that minty color, a little bit of white, and pull some more of those light rays through. Look at how pretty that looks. It's They're so fun to do. I love painting light rays, especially underwater ones. So you need a little bit of water on your brush for this. And we'll even have some that are way back there in the distance. So they're gonna be shorter. build up some more structures under the water, old pillars. Okay, I'm going to add some more shadow using phthalo blue and sap green. No water, I want this to be quite dark. I'm just adding some more depth here, guys, on the staircase and on all these little rocks and stones and lines over here. And I'm just taking a little bit of orange and I'm going over part of that green with it to make it have a bit of a, a brown tone to it. And then pulling softly for some little shadows. Okay, I've got some neon yellow. I'm gonna add a little bit more of that. Now that it's had time to dry, I can overlap some more color without worrying about it blending too much and mixing with the other color underneath that was wet before. Okay, I'm going to take some of my cadmium red now. And what I want to do is mix 
the sap green with the red to make a really deep rich color and I'm going to use this to start pulling up lines that are going to turn into my castle and my old ruins so it's very simple to start this as you can see I'm just lining kind of lining my brush up on that horizon line and because it's very old you don't have to worry too much about making everything perfectly straight and then I'm going to add a suggestion of some of that going underneath part of that castle the land the rock it's on is underneath that water and we need something for it to stand on and be built into so I'm just pushing my brush around scumbling around and then I'm going to continue to add on to this just simply pulling some lines across they're not straight some of them are a little scoopy and look how cool it looks already just by simply doing that and then you can turn your brush to make pointy tops on them or you can use a liner brush if it helps you for those little pointy ends and then lots of arches so it's all just about shapes and I talk about this in my last video I my last video is another fantasy uh, painting it's a lot smaller uh, it's uh, maybe a 6 by 6 or I don't even know maybe it was a 10 by 10 it was a lot smaller than this though and I talk about that in my last video how you should never be intimidated by painting a structure a building or a house all you have to do is break it down into shapes so here I'm thinking triangles for the tops long skinny triangles and long skinny rectangles or just thick lines little squares some archways and if you put all those together making sure those little skinny triangles are going to be on the top though if you do that then you'll have a castle in no time anybody can do this if you're just beginning and you want to paint this you can do it just do one line one block one triangle at a time So picking up just a little bit of white for more of a base underneath this color. More little lines and then lightly pulling down because close up it will look like uh, stonework, old stonework or bricks. You'll get a little bit of a texture in there. But I'm not even going to worry too much about that. I'm just going to lay down the shape now and develop the character that this castle is going to have. Like I said I earlier, I'm just painting this as it comes to my mind. Whatever my imagination is telling me to paint is what I'm doing right now. So I'm making very skinny pointy tops. I'm exaggerating that. And then sometimes we'll do half of a circle. Giving it a little bit more detail and character. Using red, sap green, sometimes more red than green. Now red and green are complementary colors and this is why I wanted to use a lot of red in this because I'm going to be building up some foliage and old vines that are, are growing around and on top of this over this castle so that green will look very nice and complement the red. Okay I'm going to add a little bit on 
the left side of the castle. Let's not forget about under the water. Under the surface here lies an old city or ruins, maybe even some sunken treasure, we'll see. I'll be adding some light in the windows to make it look like there is life in there and Maybe there's an old fireplace, maybe some lanterns, who knows? I always like to have lights on in whatever building I'm working on in a painting. Now because I want to do a little bit more fine detail, uh, it's a lot easier if I switch over to a liner brush. Now you can use any size of liner brush that you feel comfortable with. I know if you're just starting out, uh, sometimes a shorter one is a lot easier to handle. I've got one that's a medium size and I just decided right here to add a few little circles right on this little pole going on the very top because I just think this adds a lot of character and I want to make up my own castle. I'm going to define some of these edges. So you guys might be wondering what I'm using for a palette. It's a thick piece of plastic. Um, I get a lot of plastic in between um, big orders of canvas that I get. Um, and I don't know what else to do with it. I don't really want to throw it away. So I, I want to recycle it. And I cut them up into, into squares or rectangles. And I use them for palettes. And I have a few in the house. I have a few behind my my desk there and they're very easy to clean. Um, it's like having a, a glass palette. I know a lot of people, a lot of artists like to use the glass palettes. I'm too clumsy, I'm too scared of dropping it and shattering it so this, <laughs> this works for me and it's just as easy to clean as the glass. I just don't have to worry about breaking it. Okay, so I'm adding some more detail back here. Skinny lines. So I just decided to add a tiny, tiny, tiny little island or big rock here. And using my little liner brush, Red and green, a little bit of water. I'm twisting and rolling that brush around between my fingers to create an old, gnarly looking tree. It's not gonna have too, too many branches on it. Just using a little bit of turquoise in here just for some color around some of those windows. Okay, I'm back to using my little flat brush. I've got yellow, white, and turquoise on it. And I wanna create some shallow water very close to this little island in the castle 
maybe there's a beach in there or a cove. Kind of like in my last one, I really like that look of walk, that idea of like walking down the staircase out of your castle and there's a beautiful beach right there. I'm not really sure at this point if I'm going to go in that direction, but we'll see. I'll definitely be putting a staircase in there though. And whatever's left over in my brush, I'm going to start pulling up and blending some of that. So it's a little bit of yellow turquoise and white. Not a lot, it's kind of a dry brush. And I'm just kind of pulling over the pillars of this castle. Give it some more depth, a little bit of highlight. Pull some more lines in, maybe some more arches. It's all about taking your time and building it up layer after layer art really teaches you patience and it's such a great uh, way to escape I found um, to be a great coping mechanism a great way to de-stress I guess it's so good for your health and mind body and spirit to paint Art throughout my life has just had such a wonderful positive benefit for me and I love to share that with everybody. I want to help others and, and let them know that there's lots of healthy ways out there to deal with um, stress, day-to-day -day stress that you might have and oh, all sorts of stuff. And there's lots of ways to do that, not just through art, but art is a really nice um, thing to incorporate with other healthy activities. Of course, exercise is great. But sometimes we really need to exercise our brains and learning something new and, and uh, working on a painting. You need to use your brain to figure out colors and where things go and even just creating your own little worlds like this. It's very, very healthy for you. Taking some phthalo blue now, I'm going to go in between those rays and those highlights and carefully add a little bit more depth. So this is just some shadow and depth. So just a little bit of that makes a really big difference. Alright, with a clean brush, using my filbert, I'm going to take some neon yellow, some more of that sap green, and I'm going to start tapping in all the little leaves on my little tree over here. And the filbert brush is so nice for creating trees and branches and foliage. It gives it kind of that mossy look and it looks like things are kind of maybe little vines or maybe if there is some moss just kind of dripping off and dangling down. That all adds character to a painting as well. And we'll add a little highlight with some of that neon yellow. And if it doesn't show up enough, um, sometimes once it dries it will not really show up as much as it did while it, you painted it wet. So you might need to add a little bit of white in with that yellow and that's what I'm doing right here. And it looks really bright right now, but like I said, once it dries, it'll be that perfect tone. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of highlights to a few spots in and around the castle.
I picked up some neon orange and white and a little bit of yellow and I'm just going to add some detail, maybe some light and windows, little dabs. That's all you have to do. Don't think too much about it. And maybe there's even some mysterious lights underneath the water. Add a few more on this side too, smaller ones. Okay, for a really pretty shadow color, I'm using my light ultramarine blue. And I'm just pulling and dragging with my little liner brush. I'll go around the windows and down a few of the edges and maybe even add some to the little roof that's peaky and slightly rounded on the very top. Those little triangles. And we'll even add it to those little circles. My castle was looking really, really dark as that paint is drying and setting into the canvas. And I don't want it to look uh, almost spooky or scary looking. Um, I want it to have uh, that inviting, kind of a dreamy fantasy look to it. So I will really want to brighten up and bring in some more light on this castle. And I love this color. And of course, it is very complimentary to the turquoise and that peachy glow in the sky. Now I think I'm going to add a staircase right here. So I'm just going to lay out the basic design of it, the direction it's going to be going in. I'm not sure at this point if I want it to be curvy or if I just want it to be kind of straight down. Continue to add some more of this light ultramarine blue. Maybe add a little bit of white to it in some spots so they're brighter than others. I want a variation of my tone of highlights. I don't want them to all be exactly the same color. Otherwise the painting is going to look too flat. And I kind of lost my little staircase I had there so I'm going to redefine this again adding the light ultramarine blue and a little shadow at the base of the castle, the tree and then a few little sets of stairs steps going up here. I also want to add a little bit of this color in the water. Maybe there's a little archway way 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 back there. You can barely see it but just a little line, an arch of that light blue. Now I've got my medium sized mop brush. I'm gonna load it up with a light ultramarine blue, a little bit of white and start swirling, dusting little circles. The top right corner of the painting, it was just a little bit too light there. I need to bring some shadow in. Shadow around the edges of the canvas where the painting will help draw your eye into the center. Sometimes if there's too much light going on in a painting, our eyes don't know where to look first and it can just be a little bit too much. So this helps to draw our eyes in. Helps you to focus. And these colors look really pretty together. Okay, my large blending brush, it's still a little bit damp. I just want to soften this up slightly. Now I'm barely touching that canvas. It looks like I might be pushing hard, but I'm really not. And then a light sweep. Okay, now it's time to really start deciding where the staircase is going to go. And I decided to put it on an angle and a curve 
and pull it around. This adds more character and it just adds more whimsy as well. It's a lot more fun. I love that feeling that you're being pulled in and around and it makes you wonder where that staircase leads, what's in that little archway way up there. I'm adding a little bit of cadmium red and even a little bit of that neon pink way back in the horizon just because no other reason than I like the color and I like the way it looks there back to a mop brush neon pink and I'm gonna dry brush Dusting a little bit of that hot pink over top of the orange and part of the yellow. Getting it a little bit wet just to loosen up some more of that paint out of my brush. If, it's, if your brush is dripping, then you've got way too much water on it. Okay. I'm going to start pulling that pink over part of the blue to get a light purple color. And then once this dries, it's going to be a few shades darker. There, that looks really pretty. I love that little bit of pink in there. Okay, using my little flat brush, I'm tapping and dabbing a little bit of neon yellow over top of parts of the green for some more highlights on my foliage and vines and whatever's climbing up this cool little castle. Just make it up as I go along. I hope I'm inspiring you guys today and you've got lots of ideas coming into your minds and your imagination and I want to know what you guys come up with. You can send me pictures of your paintings that you do for my tutorials on Instagram or my Facebook art page, Joni Young Art. I love to hear from you guys and see what you come up with for my tutorials. I love to know that I'm inspiring you guys and my videos are making a difference. I want to pull in some more of that red now. See, look how beautiful that looks with the green. Add a little bit to the tree. Again, I know this is going to dry darker. Adding carefully some highlights on this staircase. And I'm using titanium white turquoise, a little bit of that light ultramarine blue, whatever light color you have on your palette will work. And lightening up this castle a little bit more. Again, using that light ultramarine blue. Any light color, any color on your palette with a little bit of white. Careful not to cover up all your shadows though, we need both. Now it's a little bit darker, it's had a few minutes to dry and I'm going to come over with some more green highlights. Got some turquoise, sap green, a little bit of neon yellow in there. A little bit more turquoise over here. And you can still see a hint of that red underneath.
Gonna add a little bit more to these rays here. Brighten them up a little bit with titanium white, a little bit of neon yellow. And I'm gonna draw in, paint in some more of these little reflections and shapes in the water that look so cool. And a few over here on the right, but not as much as what's in the center. That's going to be the brightest right in the middle. Okay, back up to the staircase now. I want to add some neon yellow, white, and a little bit of sap green. Maybe there's a little railing there, and it's overgrown with moss or leaves. Now I'm just coming in with black. I've got Mars black and I'm going to really make these shadows pop out and add some in between each stair. Going up this staircase, in between all these lines, windows, underneath the roofs, those little triangle tops. Now it really really pops out when you do this but you don't you want to be careful not to add too too much black or you'll leave you're gonna lose all of that color and that richness that we built up and I'm using a small liner brush for this because it's much easier for me to get in between all these columns and underneath the roof and around all the windows. I want to add a little treasure chest down here, some sunken treasures, so I'm just going to paint a little box and I'm mixing red, green, and a little bit of orange, a little bit of white, just for the old wooden box. Nothing fancy here, guys. Just a few little lines, a few little highlights, some shadows. We'll be using black for a design on the side of the front. And then for all of the treasure, I'm going to be using white, a little bit of neon yellow, and a little bit of neon orange. I'm going to be dabbing in little blobs of that color or those colors and it'll look like coins and gold and then I'm gonna also make it look like there's a pearl necklace some jeweled necklaces dangling outside over the edge of the chest just by doing little tiny dabs with the end of my liner brush so for a nice highlight you can use the neon orange titanium white which I'm doing here. Now at first I made it a little bit too big and so I'll, instead of scrubbing it all off and starting over I kind of just scumbled softly around it and added um, some seaweed and maybe some a few little bits of coral. So see here it's so easy just to make it look like there's coins and treasure in there you just dab in little blobs white, yellow, and orange. Now if you're really wanting to get carried away and um, make it look like it's really sparkling in there, you could use a little bit of diamond fine glitter. You could use some metallic paints. A little, even little bits of gold leaf would look cool and silver. Yeah, so making it look smaller now, I'm just coming around the edges with more turquoise and some sap green. Like I said, it was just a little bit overpowering and too big. I don't want anything to compete too much with the castle and everything else going on in this painting. The little treasure chest was just meant to be something a little bit extra. And 
I'm going to be using um, some magenta, some red, some neon pink for some coral, little pieces of coral on the one end of the treasure chest. I'm going to be adding a few little bubbles, nothing too detailed, just an indication that there might be some bubbles down there. And just using a liner brush, some white, some ultramarine, light ultramarine blue, and then I decided to pull the staircase over more, heading towards the center. That also helps pull our eye into the center of the canvas. So I'll make sure that I add highlights and shadow to make that stand out more. And then add some more treasure in this chest. Like I said earlier, a few little necklaces, all just doing little dots. It's so simple. Okay, and then I decided to add some studs just for a neat design on this treasure chest. It looks a little bit more appealing. And I'm using that titanium white, a little bit of orange and neon yellow. Spacing them out quite evenly. And here I've got some of my light ultramarine blue, a little bit of white liner brush, and I'm just doing some little circles with some highlights in them for some bubbles. And just using some pretty colors here along the edge for some coral. Red, pink, purple, magenta, whatever pretty colors that you want to use. And then you can give a little highlight to the inside of them by adding a little bit of white. I'm just going to add a little bit of that purple, that magenta on the far right. A little bit. I'm going to add a little bit more color in this treasure chest, maybe a little bit of turquoise, and highlight to these bubbles to make them stand out a little bit more. Add another highlight of moss on the edge of the staircase on either side for the railing. A little bit of green around those windows on the roof, all those little peaks. As the paint sets in and dries, it gets darker, so you need to go back and readjust and reapply your highlights. Okay, we're getting close to the end of this painting. I want to pull in some magenta light purple violet. Just still need a little bit more depth here on this right side. You can use an angle brush or a flat brush for this. Picking up some white and I'm going to softly blend it in slightly to that purple. Okay, and up at the top as well. 
So I tinted my white with a light ultramarine blue. Blending it into that purple or magenta. I'm going to be listing all the colors and brushes I'm using as well as the canvas in the description below um, as well as links to um, some of my playlists that I think you guys might like if you really like fantasy I've got a whole playlist series of fantasy paintings that I've done um, I can't promise that all of them are tutorials some of them are some of them are more of just a demonstration and even a couple of them might be a time-lapse when I started my channel about a year, year and a half ago, um, I was kind of just experimenting, not really knowing where I was going to go with my channel. So not all of the videos are uh, going to be uh, detailed in depth, step by step. But I promise you'll get inspiration from them. So I'm just playing up on this color a little bit more on the far right. And I want to pull some rays of light just over the treasure in this chest, making it look a little bit more magical. Now I've got a clean flat brush and I've got titanium white with some neon orange just for a little bit more highlight and a bit of contrast up there and a bit more of that color down here too getting a little bit of red down here again Okay, I'm going to add the final details down here at the bottom with my liner brush. I've got a long, skinny, fine-tipped liner brush that I'm using. You need a lot of water on your brush for this. Yeah, if you don't have enough water on your brush, it's not going to flow and you're going to be very frustrated Make sure you get equal parts of water to paint on your brush. This was such a joy to paint and share with you guys today. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe. I want to wish you guys a wonderful day, happy painting, and I will see you next time. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me paint this today, um, and I'll see you next week. Thanks! Don't forget to subscribe and like this video.